Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the one and only WDW After Dark. It is the vidcast and podcast for everything Disney. We don't talk just about Disney parks. We talk about the food. We talk about the resorts. We talk about the company. We talk about Marvel. We talk about Star Wars, movies, all kinds of stuff. Tons and tons of information slam-packed into one fantastic show that we do each week on Blab, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, the whole kit and caboodle. And we are so glad that you have decided to make us a part of your day. Hi, I'm Jeff, uh, sitting in for Al John, who is uh, on the road right now. He might be joining us a little bit later. Going to do a little bit of house cleaning real quick uh, before we get into the introductions. want to mention our sponsors over at www.afterdark.com. The first one we'll mention is if you're looking for a vacation, you want to talk to Kristen Hetzel, Miss Dining at Disney herself, over at MagicalJourneysVacations.com for the best deals when it comes to Disney vacations, Universal, Cruise Line, Adventures by Disney, and a whole lot more. Check out her website. You can find the link over at www.afterdark.com. Also, if you're looking for movie tickets, Fandango is available as well. Just a simple click, and you've got your movie tickets before the movie even happens, and you don't have to wait in line. That's also a fantastic deal. And then, of course, Amazon with, you know, back to school starting up and uh, the holidays on the way. If you're wanting to shop and not have to leave the house because it's raining outside or whatever, the best way to do it is via Amazon. And you can also find that link over at www.afterdark.com. We tell you about these links simply because they are our sponsors. And also, when you click on that link, it helps out the show running every single week. It helps out this little stuff that we have here. It buys our uh, equipment, our headphones, and uh, so much more. It helps us out in so many different ways. And we would appreciate it if you would check out WDWAfterDark.com and our sponsors. WDW After Dark. Now, host of the SORCOM review over on Sorcerer Radio, and also one of the co-hosts of Mighty Marvel Geeks, Mr. Eric Allen. Eric, how you doing this evening? I'm good. How about you, buddy? Doing fine, doing fine. What's been going on with Mighty Marvel Geeks? Uh, well, um, last week, we, uh, well, I say we, but I wasn't able to uh, be part of it. But uh, last week, the uh, Mighty Marvel Geeks crew joined up with the DC Powers podcast to do a play-by-play recap of San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, this week, we'll be covering news from the world of Marvel post-Comic-Con, as well as doing our picks of the week and the weekly Marvel Unlimited pick. And where can they find that show at? They can find it at uh, WeBeGeeks.net. You can also find it on iTunes and also airing Saturday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern on Sorcerer Radio. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate uh, you coming on the show this evening. Also joining us as usual, just like Eric, is Miss Kristen Hetzel, co-host of the WDW Tiki Room Show over on Sorcerer Radio. Also, she has a website, DiningAtDisney.com, and has a podcast. Dining at Disney has a book, all kinds of different things. She's got her fingers dipped down into all of it. Kristen, thanks for coming on the show. What's going on this next week when it comes to Dining at Disney podcast? Well, Bubba and I have done our top 
five entrees to share. So uh, some of them I think will be kind of a surprise for some people, mm -hmm. but anybody who knows Bubba will not be shocked by Bubba's number one. Like it's, <laughs> I, I knew it was coming when I saw it. So sure. uh, yeah. That's what we're going to be covering. But I figure I have some to share tonight. You know, we used to do the drink segment. And we haven't done that like sure, in, yeah. in forever. So uh, my cousin got married this past weekend. And we had some leftover beers that we had picked up at the liquor store down the street. And one of them yeah. happens to be a, a beer that you can get at Disney. And it's... La Rosa, La Rosa Moretti. La Rosa. Yeah. Okay. That's and a good version. I like that. I do. I do. This is one of my favorites. That's what I always get because you can get it at Via Napoli. You can also get it at Tutto Italia. And look what I'm drinking it in. My glass. Very nice. Very nice. It's been a long day. Love so I cups. figured I need, I'm going to have a drink tonight. And, and You're in need Disney. of a good beer. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So. so, folks, make sure you check out Dining at Disney Podcasts and also Mighty Marvel Geeks and, of course, the SORTCOM Review and the WDW Tiki Room Show over on Sorcerer Radio. Make sure you check those out. We definitely appreciate it. And now on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently holding for further traffic clearance. Check out Kristen's new website, MagicalJourneysVacations.com. For all your vacation needs, Disney, Universal, Cruise Lines, and more. Thank you for traveling with us. MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Have her book your magical vacation today. You got your headlines. WW After Dark presents Disney Headline news portion of the show where we cover a lot of things that happens within the uh, Disney community. And like I said before, that's Disney parks, food, Marvel, Star Wars, all kinds of different stuff. I figured this time, um, let me flip a coin here. Mm, meeny, miny, mo, Mr. Eric Allen. What do you have for me this week when it comes to our Disney news segment? Well, uh, how many of you play Disney infinity? I know that Kristen, you were, kind of wanting to be into it i don't did you ever get into it not into actually playing it but i have collected some of the pieces <laughs> okay i <laughs> jeff it's what about okay you? not to play oh i definitely play and, and okay. like Kristen, i i just i really like the pieces you know yeah i mean the the pieces are very very well sculpted pieces uh yeah. back on the 29th which was what was that that was friday no it was uh monday a week ago yesterday. Never mind. I take that back. I'm looking at the wrong month. <laughs> uh, it was this past Friday. <laughs> okay. Darn you, Windows. I blame my. I, I blame Bill Gates. That's what it is. Uh, last okay. Friday, uh, Disney actually came out with a timetable for the shutdown of the various elements of Disney Infinity. Uh. The thing to remember, first and foremost, that if you have the console versions like PlayStation, Xbox, you will be able to play these as usual until the cows come home as long as your Xbox or PlayStation still works. Uh, with full access to figures and play sets, the only exception is that you cannot use the community features and online multiplayer. Basically, it's an offline game only. Okay. All right. Now, until September 30th, community content, like particularly the toy boxes that people you know, upload and you can download, will still be available, and you'll be able to upload and download any of your favorite creations. All right. Okay. Keep those two in mind. As of today, right now, actually as of this past Friday, but as of right now, no in-game purchases can be made within the PC Steam version of Disney Infinity 2.0, the iOS, Google Android, Amazon Android, and Apple TV versions of the game. That feature has now been removed. You can continue to make in-game purchases within the Steam version of Disney Infinity 3. Okay. 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 Yeah. Now, the next date of importance is September 30th. All right. 
you will know on that day you will no longer be able to log in to play the PC, iOS, Google Android, and Amazon Android versions of Infinity. These will no longer be available on those on those app stores. The Steam versions of Infinity 2 and 3 will remain operational with the exception of all online services and community features. Jeez. Okay. I mean, you can't, you can't do online or community on the Steam versions. Right, right. Okay. All right. Apple TV versions of Infinity, gone. Be removed from the App Store. Wow. Okay. Uh, also, the Disney Infinity community team will no longer be reviewing or approving any new toy boxes that were submitted to Disney for all console, mobile, and PC versions of the game. If you are play, if still, if you're playing on any console, Apple TV, or Windows 8 or 10 versions of the game, you can continue to download your favorite toy box creations until March 3rd. Okay. Now. Wow. Going forward to January 3rd of next year, no yeah. in-game purchases can be made within the Windows 8 or 10 versions of the game. That feature, gone. Hmm. March 3rd, this is the final date on the schedule. Apple TV and Windows 8 and 10 versions will no longer be available. Can't play them. They won't support them. Nothing. Nothing. Those are knickknacks now. Now, all Disney Infinity online services and community features for all versions will be discontinued. So on March the 3rd, basically the only versions that you'll still be able to play are the console versions, the PlayStations and the Xboxes. And wow. even then, they are offline versions only. So this is this could be bad. This could be worse news, is what I'm thinking. In other words, it's a complete liquidation of all of it. They're re they're removing all support for it. Wow! If you've got if you have got it on a PlayStation hmm. or on an Xbox, you can still play it. Sure. If yeah. you're playing yeah. it on any other version, you're done. I do know that on, uh, I believe it's the 3.0 version, mm -hmm. you can download up to like 300 toy boxes. Correct. So basically, so, you've got, you've got a, that's a lot of content. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of content that you can still play afterwards. Yeah. You know, once you've downloaded it, it's yours. You can play it forever. Yeah. Yeah. But you just, you just can't you're you're cut off and this is point. such a disappointment i mean disney did so much to promote this and 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 bring it to life you know made it a part of e3 it was a big part of the d23 oh yeah and, and so much more you know it was ex i mean especially like d23 mm -hmm. you guys got exclusive characters and, and all this other different stuff and I now it just have seems... an extra one that i can sell See, I mean, it's just, you may want to hold on to it. I mean, considering that it's going away, you know, yeah. just after, what, three years? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? So, well, yeah. but at the same time, I mean, what else can they do? Because sales, yeah. Yeah. sales of it are just, just evaporating. Yeah. Now sure. you could say that it's kind of like the jumping the shark for toys to life games which include Lego Dimensions and Nintendo Amiibo sure. and, and all that. Yeah. yeah. But at, at the same time, really, for something as massive as Infinity is, three years is not a bad run. It's not a bad run, but I don't think Disney Infinity reached its potential. I would, could be. I would agree with you there because I think three is kind of like the best version so far, if if one had been more like three, I think it'd still be going. Yeah. yeah. And there are so many characters that should have been introduced to Disney Infinity that were not. Just, but we're on yeah. the drawing board. I've seen a lot of concept art mm -hmm. over the last couple of months 
uh, from Disney that Disney has released of concept characters that they were going to release, you know, mm-hmm. the next version or sometime next year. A- and they all looked fantastic. But look at it this way. I, even though all this content is ending, the online portion is ending, no more purchases, no more of this, no more of that. One, if you've got a lot of Disney Infinity character pieces, uh, what a fantastic addition to your collection of Disney memorabilia uh, with other Disney merchandise that you may have in your home. Um, and at the same time, it still, like you said, usable on the, on the consoles uh-huh. for children to continue to use their imagination and continue to play. Yeah, um, I mean, it's you almost won't notice the difference if you're yeah, playing a console yeah. version and you really didn't download a whole lot of toy boxes anyway. True, yeah, and that's true. Also, like I, t- I told you a couple of months ago, uh-huh. I picked up Disney 2.0 because I, you know, I upgraded to the Xbox One. Uh-huh. I needed the new game and everything, so I just bought the new playset. I got 2.0 for $10. And that's so, another thing. If you're looking to pad out your collection because... If, if you're like me, I, I bought a few of the threes. I think I've got, I, yeah. I know I've got all of the ones except for the crystal ones. Uh, I've mm-hmm. got, I think I've got all of the twos. I don't have, but about half of the threes because yeah. at my time three came out, we, we played the star Wars play sets. I didn't play it as much and my son didn't play it as much. Yeah. But, I uh, heard from somebody else in the fun zone today that Walmart has marked down their their play sets and their figures. I think the figures are like five bucks each. Yeah, wow. around about that much. Yeah, so, they are dropping quick. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got if you want to pick up that Tron or Mulan or or Mickey or Minnie, yeah, now's the time to do it. Now's the time to do it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Four ninety six got, Eric? for many of the characters. There you have it. Some of them Anything else, like- Eric? I'm sorry? Some of them Anything are still else? regular price. Yeah, some of them are some still them regular are. price. The ones that they can the ones that they think they're still high demand for. It, yeah. it, what tell what what that's telling me, you mark it down to four ninety six, we got a crap ton of Tinker Bells and we need to move them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the truth. Yeah. So, but that's yeah. uh, that's the timeline, and this is all coming off of the the timeline was on Infinity's own website, which is infinity.disney.com. So, if okay. you uh, if you need a refresher, you need to, you need more details. Go there. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that, Miss Kristen. What's happening in the world of Disney food? Okay, so the flying fish has been reimagined. They completely went in and gutted the entire inside of the restaurant. Uh, there is a new chef also at helm, and that is Chef Tim Mejoras. And they gutted been, the fish. <laughs> he has been with Flying Fish since 2011. So he's not new to the restaurant. He just has a new position as the executive chef. And they redid the entire interior. I don't know if anybody has been on the Disney Parks blog site, but you can see on there some of the details to it. It's really clean. Uh, It's got a very contemporary, modern look to it. Before, it was very whimsical. It had blues and pinks and some beiges and those kind of colors. All that is gone. Sure. um, It's... It's really pretty the way that they designed it. And one of the things is they have fish that are made out of, it looks like they're made out of glass as maybe chandeliers, something like that. Um, yeah. Golden wing room panels. Uh, yeah. So it is a sh- chandelier. It's a glistening chandelier and it's supposed to mimic a school of fi- flying fish swimming overhead. Nice. Uh, there's also featured in there, it says boardwalk inspired mementos like carnival art, vintage games, and nod to the legendary flying, uh, flying turns roller coaster. Uh, with that is also a whole new menu. Um, Mm. 
the kitchen, one of the things that they have is an onstage kitchen. So you can see your food being made. But some of the menu items include, uh, there's going to be sustainable fish and shellfish. There's a corn crusted wild golf shrimp, wild Alaskan king salmon and plancha seared uh, hookah hookah keto uh, scallops if you're a meat eater and you do not like fish they've got wagyu filet mignon kuro buddha mm. pork belly and bison <laughs> strip loin bison mm -hmm. they're serving bison at the flying fish yes mm. that just sounds wrong <laughs> i know right but it i'm sure it's gonna taste really good my palate is getting very excited yes. right now. i just have to yes that. Nice. My, really? my inner I, carnivore is dancing. Yes. There is also 80, uh, nearly 80 selections of glasses by the wine. They've got a whole new wine list, too. And then they've got images of some of the desserts. One of them is called S'mores Time at the Beach. I thought you meant they had 80 different glasses that you could choose from to try the wine. I'm like, <laughs> oh, boy, <laughs> there's a selection I want, you know. <laughs> Can I have one like this? Oh, God. For the wine. God. <laughs> I couldn't be outdone by Kristen with her little Italy cup, so I have to have my Germany Stein. Nice. Oh, I, and making me feel bad. I'm drinking out of a can. That's uh, great. Thanks, guys. <laughs> but you don't have to clean any dishes afterwards. There you You're go. damn right I do. <laughs> <laughs> so 80 different wines to choose from. Yes, by the glass. By the glass. But yeah, they have a good selection of menu items. So if you, if you, there's even a free range chicken. So if you don't like seafood, there's other things for you to, to order. Um, yeah. But I will say this, this dessert, this s'mores on the beach is mm. really super cute. And I'm sure it's going to be delicious because who doesn't like s'mores? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever called my food super cute before. Eric, have you done that before? Um, I look at it as a conquest, <laughs> not as you know, a pretty little thing. You know? <laughs> oh, you're such a cute little steak. Yes, you are. Look at that okay, little look, rib. You, haven't, you don't ever want, or you've never seen like the uh, desserts or the cakes, those little like cake wars that they do and these oh, crazy yes. things people do. Oh, yeah. You yes. can go, oh, that's prettier. Oh, that's super cute. I go. I've never that said that. Absolutely <laughs> beautiful, and I want to eat it. I don't want to cuddle it. I want to eat it. It can be I, cute and still edible. Eric, I think we just confirmed Kristen's never going to invite us to the Dining at Disney podcast. <laughs> 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 we want oh. to devour everything. Oh boy, you know, a we little cupcake! I will purpose? stroke it and hug it, it and name it George. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <goodness gracious. laughs> It'll open starting on August 3rd, so that's tomorrow. And uh, reservations are now being accepted, and I have already made mine for October. Awesome. I'm going to do that the next trip I go on and, and the next, uh, you know, <laughs> trip that I have, and I'm they're going to bring my food, and I'm going to look at the waiter and go, it's so cute. I don't want to eat it. <laughs> Okay, Nicole, you have to document that. She will. She will. <laughs> She's like, don't do that. <laughs> you have to. You have to have the phone. You have to be recording it. Oh, you have geez. to be recording him saying, "It's so cute." Oh Life my goodness! It. <laughs> oh, might it's as well. so fluffy. Might. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Okay, it's getting out of control now. Kristen, what other food news do you have? Anything that's, else? That's it. <laughs> that's it. All right, good enough. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to uh, some Disney Park news and just something, uh, a couple of things to mention real fast. Uh, anytime I uh, hear something about the Muppets and Disney uh, combined together, I get real excited. But uh, uh, Disney has announced that a new live show is going to be coming to the Magic Kingdom uh, this fall, and it's going to feature the Muppets, actually. It's the Muppets present great moments in American history. It's going to debut in October of this year. It's going to have an original song, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, you've got Sam Eagle, the fiercely patriotic American Eagle, who is forever trying to set a high moral standard 
for the Muppets. You know, always keep them very patriotic. Uh, also, he will he will join Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, Fozzie the Bear, the Great Gonzo, and James Jefferson over in Liberty Square as they gather outside the Hall of Presidents to present a historical tale in a hysterical type of fashion, as only the Muppets can do. I mean, when the Muppets do it, they do it original, and it's really, really fantastic. Um, it's all to uh, from the midnight ride of Paul Revere to the singing of the Declaration of Independence. The Muppets are going to appear throughout the day to share with guests their own unique take on the Founding Fathers and the birth of the United States of America. So that's something really brand new and I think is going to be a big hit uh, getting to see the Muppets actually outside there in front of that area and, and getting to I'm hoping maybe they interact with guests a little bit that would be really that cool if they would were to be do yes like that. using the technology you know? kind of like uh, turtle talk or yeah yeah or, exactly or the the mobile lab one say like what they what did they call it um, the version the the, the the Muppet Mobile Lab. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The Muppet Mobile Lab. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, most definitely. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be a fantastic addition. Now, one thing that did come up today, um, and this is part of it is kind of con- – part of it is confirmed. The other part of it is a rumor. But Paint the Night, it is a parade that happens there in the Magic Kingdom, and it happens in Disneyland over in Anaheim is going to be going away, I believe it was on September the 5th, if I'm correct, September the 5th. Just completely gone. Uh, Now, some people think this may be because of budget cuts going on with Disneyland over there for some reason. A lot of people think that they're shutting it down because they are bringing it to the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Just like the Guardians of the Galaxy version of Mission Space, mm. version of uh, Ellen's Energy Adventure starring Ra- Rocket freaking Raccoon. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to trust that uh, that rumor until I actually see it from the Disney Parks blog yeah. that it's going to happen. So, yeah, no, uh, I'll pass on that. Paint the Night's a fantastic parade for Disneyland. Absolutely wonderful. A fantastic soundtrack that goes along with it, plus the floats are amazing. If it were to come to uh, the Magic Kingdom, I think it would be, get a huge welcome. People would absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. But then would they finally retire, and I do mean retire, the Main Street Electrical Parade? Okay, with with parades like that, especially one that's such a classic and such beloved by fans, yeah, I really don't see it ever being permanently and totally retired. This is kind of like putting it in the Disney vault if it were a movie. It's like, oh, it's in the vault for a few years. Oh, look, it's back. Yeah. If, if there's a warehouse where Disney keeps old floats and every all this other stuff. It, I could see it going there and sitting there for a while. I don't know if it would always be gone, but uh, we'll watch close. We'll see what happens, you know. Disneyland is losing it. Maybe they're gaining something better. Uh, we hope so. Uh, they do have fantastic shows over there, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll just watch real close. One other thing that I wanted to mention, I was talking about this with Kristen and Eric before the show started. Uh, a friend of mine on Facebook said she was watching periscope of a couple who were at the Walt Disney World Resort over in the Animal Kingdom, and they were live streaming on Periscope. And she said that a Disney cast member walked up to them and said, you are not allowed to live stream here. In order to live stream here, you have to have a press pass. And I just kind of went, what? When, When did that become a policy? And when have I ever seen Disney enforce something like that? As long as, you know, Periscope has been around and now Facebook Live has been around, I have not heard the first thing when it comes to not being able to live stream in the parks. Nobody's ever said anything to me about it. Guys, have either of you heard of this happening before? No. 
Now, How in the world can they enforce something Aljohn, like that? Aljon at one time was told that he had to stop audio recording in the park. I wasn't with him. It was during Star Wars weekends. And there was a group of people where they were sitting there and discussing some of the events. And he was told to stop audio recording. <sighs> okay, that's weird too. But there is nowhere that that is that that's stated. I have never seen it posted or on the Disney website or no cast member has ever come up to me and done it. Because here's the thing. If you're going to sit and tell me that nobody can live stream while they're at Walt Disney World, then you better take every single cell phone away from mm -hmm. every single person that walks into a Disney park. You try and do that, and I'll see it actually work and be enforced. And here's another this thing. This is the only... Go ahead. Okay, now this is... I've got the, I've got the website up, Park Rules. What it says, under prohibited activities. Okay. F, photography, videotaping, or recording of any kind for commercial purposes. Oh. oh. So mm. they think that you're trying to make a buck off of live streaming. <laughs> How do they know I'm live streaming, though? Yeah, that's... How do they know? I'm not just simply doing a video for my own family vacation. Yeah, see, that's the that's the other question. That's what I was just going to ask. It's like, how can you tell if somebody's live streaming or just recording a home video on their phone or on their camera? At that point, you're not only going to have to take up every uh, camera, every digital camera, because you're pretty sure you can't yeah. live stream on a film camera. Uh, mm hmm Every video camera. Maybe it was Periscope. What's that, Kristen? Maybe it was something like Periscope because, you know, you get hearts and you can see that on the screen. You can see text on the bottom of the screen where, you know, from a chat room. So that would be a way that they would be able to tell looking at your phone that you're streaming something rather than recording it directly to your phone because those icons and things pop up on the screen. But what's the difference, though? What's the difference? Whether I record it on my phone and I put it on YouTube or whether I live stream it and it's either on Facebook Live or it's on Snapchat or Instagram or Periscope or God knows whatever other type of, you know, social media live streaming there is. What's the matter? We're not broadcasting this to CBS or ABC or NBC. You know, we don't have a direct feed to Fox News. God help us. I, I don't get it. What What's the deal? Eric? I, I honestly, I think it could be a lack of communication and clarification from Disney down to the cast members. Because if you say, all right, you know, that clause F says you cannot video cord or live stream for commercial profit or commercial enterprise. For commercial, yes, to make money. Okay. Understandable. That I totally understand. It's kind of like when uh, Jim Hill supposedly got banned from Disneyland because he was charging people to take them on his tours of the yeah. park. That I yeah. totally get. Now, if you're trying I to say, okay, I'm walking through Magic Kingdom and I'm live streaming and I am charging people to watch my live stream. I get that. I get that. I get that. Yep. If you are, however, doing it just for, oh, well, this is going up on my personal Facebook page or this, I'm, I'm recording it for a YouTube video, then you're out of line. If I'm just simply FaceTiming my mom, yeah, or I'm showing my sisters, uh, my nieces, like when Nicole and I were at Walt Disney World the last time, I got on FaceTime with them. Mm -hmm. That that is live streaming, yes, and showed them wishes while we were there. So why didn't a cast member walk up to me and say, "I'm sorry, sir, you cannot do that here"? What's the difference? See, that's why I'm saying. 
it's got to be a breakdown in communication and instruction. You probably you, you, it's you probably got somebody new not. who just heard no live streaming. I mean, if I'm walking around with a huge video camera with external lighting, a microphone with the dead kitty cat cover on it and everything else, uh, okay, then I'm I'm probably doing something I'm not supposed to yes. do. Yes. This is a given, okay? But if I just have my cell phone and I'm just showing everybody on Instagram where I'm at. I mean, Scott said in the chat room, he said, guest relations at Animal Kingdom said that videotaping, photo making, and uh, where did it live go? Streaming is and live streaming is prohibited. I don't know. No, that's, 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 that's stupid. That's dumb. It is, and it's a miscommunication somewhere. And here's the thing. If it's not written in if it's not written in black and white, then it's not a policy. Then it's not a policy. I've never seen it. Show it to me. Show it to me. But you try and enforce that. You try and have yes. every single cast member police every single cell phone that enters a Disney park and tell them they can't do something, you're going to have a hell of a time on your hands. And it's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. You got 50,000 people do? walking into a theme park, and I guarantee you at least 40,000 of them have a cell phone with a camera on it. Yeah. Yeah. He said, guest relations told me that since it's not a written on the website, it's not a policy. Then why are they griping about it? Okay. So if it's, if you have to contact Disney legal to find, which maybe we should do, they've got the phone number here on the website. It's, it's 818-567-5151. And you Let's can do a contact them. So that would be interesting to find out from them. What? Live call to Disney legal at nine o'clock at night. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, did you see on there when it talks about pets into the park and it and it says for um, service animals? Did anybody notice that in parentheses, one of the options for your animal might be a miniature horse? What? A miniature horse. A miniature horse. Yes, huh. a miniature horse. Huh. That's um. Cat would have come to mind before miniature horse. Yeah. Well, would, you know, yeah. therapy animal. The, uh, well, I mean, it is not that hard to register an animal as a service animal these days because yeah. there are different versions of service animals. But there are certain requirements, like for all it of depend them. Like one of them is they can't eat table food. Even for one, for somebody who has anxiety, they cannot eat from a table. Another thing, yeah, that's if you true. have a dog, yeah. it can't bark. Your dog has to be trained to be able to be out in public and not bark. And like my neighbor's dog, that you put it outside yeah. and it sees a car and it barks for the next hour and 20 minutes. Miley, you're not going to Walt Disney World anytime soon. Just going to throw that out there. I'm waiting for the whimper. I'm I'm working on trying so, to get I mean, Edgar to where I can use Edgar from... as a service animal. I want to take him places. With me. Edgar can't handle people he don't Aside know. Aside from our, oh, he no, Edgar animals. loves people. Wait a minute, which is the one? Was Leopold, it Leopold? Leopold, yeah. So okay, we're gonna close out the show as we normally do it. Our talking heads are gonna talk about where they can be found on social media. Miss Kristen Hetzel, where can everybody find you if they're looking for you? They can visit dining at disney dot com on social media. Everything from Twitter to the Periscope Dining at Disney, except for you, you can catch there the Dining at Disney podcast and on YouTube, it's the Dining at Disney. But the podcast, if you just want to listen to it rather than watch it, you can download it on iTunes. And don't forget and to listen to Kristen on Sorcerer Radio, the WDW Tiki Room Show. 
Friday mornings, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, the show about all things Disney. Mr. Eric Allen, where can everybody find you? Okay, you can uh, find me on Twitter in two places, at Sorcom Review for Disney-related stuff, and at Uncle Servo for more general shenanigans. Uh, you can visit the Sorcom Review's Facebook page, where else on Facebook. And uh, you can also hear me on Sorcerer Radio, Tuesdays at 8 a.m. for the Sorcom Review, and Saturdays at 8 p.m. for Mighty Marvel Geek. And Mighty Marvel Geeks is also available at WeBeGeeks.net and on iTunes. Thank you very much, Mr. Eric Allen. You can find me on Twitter at DW underscore 60 or at Jeff Davis underscore 75. Look for my vlogs over on YouTube. Just search for my name, my picture, my ugly mug comes up. Make sure you click it. Make sure you watch. Make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe when you're doing all those vlogging videos on YouTube. Listen to me on Sorcerer Radio. Thursday mornings, 8 a.m. Eastern Time for DW60 for the latest in Walt Disney World news. And that's where you can find the three of us. Got to close out the show completely now. Anybody else have anything they want to talk about before we go? Any mentions? Any oh, by the ways? No, I think I'm good. No? Good. Okay. So we definitely appreciate the support. Make sure you check out our sponsors once again. Magical Journeys Vacations with Kristen at MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Amazon, also Fandango. All that stuff can be found on the sponsors page, WDWAfterDark.com. We appreciate the support with that. Listen to all the shows. Listen to all the podcasts. Remember, you can catch us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher Radio. Give us those five-star reviews. There was something that... um, Al John wanted me to mention that I forgot about, and I need to bring that up real quick. Uh, it had to do with last week's discussion, our top five discussion that we did last week. The audio was a little bit glitched on the version that we put out on iTunes. <clears throat> so what he is going to be doing is he's going to be re-uploading last week's top five uh, as part of our Disney discussion. So what you may need to do is you may need to delete that one and redo it again you may have to unsubscribe and subscribe again uh to wdw after dark on itunes in order for it to load up properly so if you listen to that part of the show last week and it didn't come out right al john's going to upload another one and uh you'll be able to hear it so i just want to mention that real quick anybody else anything no i'm good so YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, five-star reviews, comments, all that stuff. We love it. We love you guys. We appreciate your support watching and listening to all of us every single week. And we hope that you will come back for another edition of WDW After Dark. Until next time, remember, it is always better after dark. We'll see you later. Take care.